What's going on, everybody? I'm here for the recap of the Monday, December 4th slate. Um, all in all, I'm happy. Well, not maybe not happy. All in all, I'm indifferent. Um, I got bailed out, I think. In hindsight, I hate my lineup. And I made a bunch of mistakes. But what we've got here, $60 in entry fees, uh, $55.90 in winnings. So we were down $4.10. Not the best. Uh, we put up 313.2, which looks good on paper. If you would have asked me that the night, like before the night started, I'd have been like, sure, I'll take it. But, you know, we'll, we'll do what we got to do. We'll, we'll keep grinding. Um, so to go over my lineup, I had Steph Curry, Eric Bledsoe, Devin Booker, Drew Holiday, Boyan Bogdanovic, who apparently I own always, Darius Miller, Aaron Gordon, ugh, Taj Gibson, Dwight Howard. Um, I had them projected for 294 minutes. They actually played 308, and I had them projected for 284 points. They uh, actually put up 313, which is nice. I'll take that. Um, I'll go uh, position by position through all the highs and lows and some of the good value plays. So at point guard, um, I had Curry, obviously, at uh, 9,900. I liked him a lot. I thought the matchup was good. I thought the game pace and game score was good. Um, Pels give up a little bit more threes, so I thought that fit for Curry. Like, all in all, I just he seemed to be in a really good spot. And then... When I dumped my projections into the optimizer and ran a big stack of lineups, Curry popped a lot, which made me think you can find value at other positions, and I might be able to end up with Curry, which I did. Put up 54 and a half in 34 minutes. It's uh, 5.5x, so I'll take it. I I can't be too upset. 27.8 um, ownership percentage in this double up that I'm looking at. So that's you know perfectly fine for me. Um, next I went with Eric Bledsoe and this Eric Bledsoe was not in my lineup until the Ben Simmons flu-ish news came out so I did scramble a little bit um, there was a point where I was going to almost end up on Draymond and Tyler Eulis which ultimately would have been much better but you know that's that's DFS for you I liked Bledsoe from a matchup standpoint oddly enough um, and he's just been playing really well. His salary had dropped $600 to 7000 And he had been putting up 35 a game in five of his last six. So I just, I liked the trend that he was on. I just felt like his salary was probably too low. In the end, he put up 27 points in 34 minutes, 3.9x. Not the best performance. Um, he was 7.7% owned, so I was just wrong there. Chalk that up to the first of many guys that I was wrong on. Um, you know, that happens. It's a learning experience. That's what I'm trying to do here. Grind out more information. So, some of the other point guards um, to take a look at. Uh, Kyrie just missed hitting 5x by, you know, next to nothing. 41 and 33 minutes. Uh, Schroeder, not very good. Neither was Spencer Dinwiddie, Alfred Payton, or Eric Bledsoe. Um, what you wanted to do was be on Kemba Walker. 53.9 fantasy points in 34 minutes. 6.9x. He was like 30-something percent owned. I was a little nervous to own him coming back off of the injury. Uh, apparently no one else was. He was a, a pretty chalky point guard play. And I liked that game a lot, uh, as you'll be able to see um, as we keep going. I just had the wrong pieces of it. And it was a great game. I just, you know, stacked the wrong guys. Um, Chris, or, yeah, Jeff Teague laid a big egg, 14 and 32 minutes. And then we had a big stretch of guys that hit value. Uh, Darren Collison, Rondo, Jamal Murray, Reggie Jackson, Dennis Smith all hit 5X or higher. Um, I never looked at Collison too, too much. And I probably should have because of the matchup. Um... 
Knicks didn't really have anything good to speak of, but I was a little nervous that they would just blow them out. Um, you know, Rondo was up in the air for me. I just don't ever really trust him. And I actually got off of Jamal Murray on purpose. I didn't think... I like the matchup for him, but he's so boom-bust that I couldn't really go with him in cash. Um, and then Reggie Jackson and Dennis Smith were two guys that I didn't really pay attention to. Uh, we had a big quagmire of awful Michael Carter-Williams, Jared Jack, Sedaransky, Jerry and Grant, Mike James, Chalmers. Um, but if you get the Tyler Ulyss, $4,000, 30 fantasy points, 37 minutes, 7.6x. I talked about him a little bit yesterday, and I was close to taking him. I just pivoted that last second because I felt safer with uh, Bledsoe and Gibson. It's a miss on my part. I mean, granted, it's Tyler Ulyss. He's not exactly like the safest cash play in the history of cash plays, but you know what I mean. Uh, that's probably it for point guard. Nobody was going to have Neto and Yogi Ferrell's Yogi Ferrell. All in all, like point guard was kind of just bleh. Moved to shooting guard, though. So, I had Booker and Holiday. Um... They were the first two things that popped when I loaded my numbers. Uh, Booker ended up with 63 fantasy points. He just kept shooting the damn ball. <laughs> 9x, 63 in 38 minutes. Just giant, giant game. Um, loved the game for him. Loved every bit of it. This went. Shooting guard could not have gone better, actually. Um... And then I had Drew Holiday, 47.2 fantasy points in 38 minutes, 7x. Again, just absolutely awesome. Uh, Booker was pretty chalky, 37%. Drew at 22%. Like, that's exactly what I was hoping for for those guys. That's the perfect range for me, in my opinion. Oladipo came back down to earth a little bit, 33 points in 29 minutes. I was nervous about his increased salary being buoyed by... Um, a lot of steals and blocks. It's not as normal stat padding. So um, I'll probably be avoiding him until he gets back down in like the mid to low eights. Uh, Beal, again, just not very good. 12.7 fantasy points in 27 minutes. He is. They got blown out 47 by the Jazz. Um, he desperately needs John Wall back. And then Donovan Mitchell... Uh, only played 25 minutes, although he's the type of guy that I would have expected to get burn in a blowout, so it's good to see, but um, the Jazz just smacked the Wizards around, so it was hard for Mitchell to get any. Uh, Evans and Barton both put up 6x. Um, they weren't... Barton's salary had concerned me now that it's up a little bit, and Evans just wasn't in a very good matchup. It was It would be hard to go after him in a cash scenario um clay was average clay but there was a big group like chris middleton had a huge game 44 fantasy points gary harris had a huge game 38.6 in 42 minutes i did like gary harris uh last night and then wade in his return to chicago 34 points in 25 minutes um all very good performances from shooting guards uh we hit a, a bit of a lull in the in the groupings wiggins lamb fournier and marcus smart all underperformed. Justin Holiday and Reddick both came in at value. I liked Batum earlier in the day. I just couldn't get to him because I liked uh, Booker and Holiday so much more. <clears throat> I also didn't expect Batum to be as chalky as he ended up being, um, just because he hadn't necessarily been playing well and hadn't been playing a lot this year. But he ended up getting to 6.3x, 34.7 minutes or 34.7 points in 37 minutes. Um, other guys that you would have loved to have. I was very anti-Alec Burks on FanDuel yesterday. And this performance doesn't really change anything for me. He put up 40.5 in 27 minutes. Um, I think he got to those 27 minutes, you know, because Hood is out. And as soon as Hood comes back, like, he's just not rosterable because his salary is going to still be high. But at 4,800, like, that's pretty much where he should be. And I think that this was the most optimal scenario in a 47-point blowout. He looked good on DK. I think he was like 3,900 or 4,000. That makes way more sense. But 
otherwise, um, you know, it, it's rare to think that the Jazz are going to be prov providing a ton of value over salary. Although their offense has been incredible since Gobert was out. But, you know, Gobert was back last night, played 21 minutes. Good to see him back. Um, if you were looking for any other big uh, value plays, it would have been either Karis LeVert, Danny Green, Devin Harris, um, Etan Moore with a career high in threes, maybe points as well. 35 fantasy points in 37 minutes, 8.8x. Um, if you ended up on Damian Dotson, he put up 27.9 in uh, in 29 minutes. But that's that's uh, shooting guard for you. Now, small forward was a little weird because I didn't really see Giannis or Braun as like terribly good options after I did all of my research through the day. I did like Braun in the morning, and then ended up off of him. I had pivoted to Ben Simmons temporarily. Yeah. Um, but Giannis, the, the, the game pace for and like their matchup at 12,400 was just really tough pill to swallow. Um, so the, the big guns at small forward all dramatically underperformed. Uh, Giannis, LBJ, Durant, you know, 4.3x or less, just you know, not very good value. Um, you wanted to have either Butler or TJ Warren at the top, top of the heap. Uh, B Butler specifically, 49.9 in 40 minutes, 5.9x. Uh, TJ Warren with 43. Harris and Barnes put up 37.5 in 36 minutes. But a lot of small forward was really bad. Otto Porter, not very good. Uh, Bobby Covington, not very good. Damari Carroll was a little chalky, couldn't get to 5x. Uh, Jalen Brown picked up three fouls in the first four minutes of the Celtics game, so uh, he was stunted a little bit, 22 minutes. Uh, Prince, <laughs> Jonathan Simmons finished with 22.7 fantasy points and didn't hit 5x. I didn't notice that until right now. Holy hell. So, at the end of my live stream, I started watching the Magic and Hornets game on my computer kept the live stream open with my feed and the chat and uh we sort of like live watched some basketball for the first half hour and 45 minutes of the slate and jonathan simmons was just going bucket after bucket after bucket and aaron gordon was sitting on negative one fantasy points and i was ready to just jump from the top of my house to think that he didn't do shit in the second half is hilarious and still played 34 minutes. That's why I don't like Jonathan Simmons. Dude turned into a ghost after running shit. Um, and then you had Black Holes, Valen Crab, Joe Ingles, Courtney Lee. Courtney Lee playing 19 minutes is crazy. And then Denzel Valentine. Did something happen to Courtney Lee? Courtney Lee playing 19 minutes is really weird. Admittedly, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the Knicks game. Doesn't look like anything. If something happened to uh, Courtney Lee, let me know in the comments. I'm not going to look any further. I don't care. It's Courtney Lee and the Knicks. Um, and then we got into some value plays, and I'm pretty happy about this. Uh, Michael K. Gilchrist put up 28.6, but he was, he was never on my uh, on my radar. Um, I wanted to have Rudy Gay, and I did have him in in the Ben Simmons build. Uh, but I had to get off of him salary-wise uh, once the Simmons flu news came out. So Gay put up 36 in 31 minutes. He was just an amazing play last night with Kyle Anderson out. I mean, Rudy Gay is still a really good basketball player, especially when he's able to play, you know, a bit stretchier. Um, and playing in that Spurs system, I feel like that reins him in a little bit better. Just an efficient dude now. It's so weird to think about for Rudy Gay. Um, so I ended up with Bojan, 27 points in 29 minutes, 6.1x. Um, I just try to stay on him when he's going to be in a situation where he's going to be able to jack up threes. I'm, I'm going to bet that they go in at an average rate, and it'll work for me. Um, my other uh, small forward was Darius Miller. He had 13.9 fantasy points in 34 minutes, so dramatically underperformed, but he was pretty chalky. Um, you'll see Bojan was 5.1% owned, so I'm very happy to get 6x on a 5.1% guy. 
and then you know Miller underperformed, but at 3,700, it's not going to kill you when his ownership is almost 50. percent So I can't I can't be too mad about that. Um, for value plays, you were looking to get a piece of Dante Cunningham, Stanley Johnson, Iguodala, uh, DeAndre Bembry, or Royce O'Neal. Uh, Royce O'Neal, I don't think was playable. I didn't have him projected for more than 20 minutes. Now, power forward. This is the place where it all matters. Just as a reminder, I had Aaron Gordon at 2.6% owned and Taj Gibson at 43% owned. This is the biggest miss I had, and I'm not even entirely sure how it happened. So I had Ben Simmons all morning up until 6 o'clock, and news came out that Ben Simmons had the flu and that he felt like shit. And I pivoted off of him because it's cash and I can't be taking a guy that allegedly has the flu. It's just silly. So I made my changes and ended up on Aaron Gordon. And Simmons played well. 55 fantasy points in 36 minutes. He hit 5.2x. My team would have been better to have him. Um, He was in a pretty good matchup. The Suns suck. Like it was just, it was good. I didn't really want to get to Aldridge. He did 35 and 35 minutes, 4.2x, just a standard game, really. It just wasn't, that's not the game that you want to be taking, Spurs. I almost ended up on Draymond Green. He was, after I had already locked in Aaron Gordon, I had two spots left, and when I went with Bledsoe and Taj, I believe this is how it went down, I could have had Draymond and Ulyss, and that just felt a little risky for me. And I was wrong again. <laughs> 56 fantasy points in 38 minutes, 7x. Big, big game out of Draymond. So Gordon. I'm not entirely sure how he ended up with such low ownership. I don't... That game was incredibly tasty from a lines perspective. Um, just for... You know, like 113, 105, they're both top 10 in implied points. It just felt like it was going to be an up and down game that would fit him. And I thought it, the places that uh, the Hornets were a little weak defensively, I thought were going to go really well for him. And he was just pretty passive. He took one shot in the first quarter. Uh, The shots that I saw him take in the first half were all short rim. It's like he didn't have the legs for it. And, uh, I mean, that's it's a dramatic miss and a dramatic um, miscalculation of where I thought he would be. Because there's no chance in hell I take him if he's owned at 2%. I ignore him immediately last night, and I probably end up on Draymond. But it's a big, big miss. I don't... And I don't entirely know why, especially after the Ben Simmons news. But it's a learning experience. I'm going to dig into it and try to figure out why I was so wrong on Aaron Gordon last night. Because that's the biggest hole in my lineup by far. Um, And then we had a big crop of dudes that sucked. Uh, Favors. Hollis Jefferson hit 4.9x, so almost got there. Markinen underperformed to 5x. Saric underperformed. Harris underperformed. T- Jason Tatum underperformed. John Henson laid an egg. Um, you needed either Thad or Fareed. I know Ilya Sovo was popular. He put up 3.2x. Taj grinded out his 28 and 37 minutes. Big ups to Tibbs. 5.4x. I'll take it. Um, I never really looked at anything lower than. Uh, Taj, he was pretty much my floor. I was never looking at Beasley on FanDuel. That was he was strictly a DK play at five thousand dollars. He didn't want Michael Beasley, and it showed. He played fourteen minutes and got eleven fantasy points. People got too cute. Big stretch of value though coming up: Jamichael Green, Jeff Green, Trey Lyles, Trevor Booker, Dwight Powell, Bobby Portis, Frank Kaminsky, all five X or higher. Some of those guys like Kaminsky, seven point one X. I'm better off playing him. Um, I don't think most people were on David West, Gorgi Zhang, or uh, Bertans, or Bender, so we'll skip to centers now. I had 
Dwight Howard, 1.8% owned. Again, this is another spot where this is my second biggest miss. I thought that Dwight would be heavily owned. I know that he was, well, not heavily owned, but way more than 1%. I know that he had that stinker in his most recent game. His per minute stats were fine. He just turned the ball over and got into foul trouble. And this seems like a good spot. Magic aren't the best matchup for him. Um, you know, the game was supposed to be up and down. Charlotte's implied total was really high. Uh, it felt like a great Dwight Howard game. And he had 22 f- points in 29 minutes. Got a flagrant in like the first five. Just didn't get anything done and it ended up at 3x just another gigantic miss and Dwight Howard was someone that I pulled out from the jump in the morning and focused on so I need to reevaluate my thought process there because that was just I was just an incorrect play and I need to do my due diligence to figure out why um, now I know Cousins was going to be a really popular play with AD out. He put up 59.7 in 31 minutes. I just couldn't get there from a salary perspective um, without taking a bit of haircut elsewhere. That's why I took the haircut on Dwight. But he hit 5.4x. Um, Embiid hit 4.9x. Andre Drummond 4.4. Gasol 4.3. Uh, Gobert and Towns were both 3.1, so not a lot going good at the top. You wanted to have Love, 42.6 in 22 minutes. He's just been playing really, really good basketball, really efficient basketball. Vooch ended up with 37, um, which in theory I should have used that extra 200 I had and paid up. Horford put up 43.8 in 34 minutes. That's a big game for him, 5.8x. Um, if you had Pau Gasol or Rolo or Tyson Chandler, who had 41 in 36 minutes, you're probably pretty happy. I assume no one went much lower than that, unless you were looking at uh, Miles Plumley, maybe. Um, Mason Plumley, 18 in 19 minutes, 3.2x. Salary's just way too high. He was only ever in play at that low number. That's basically what center looked like. And that's where I ended up. Um, you know, Bojan at 5% ended up being a good play, but all in all, uh, you know, Devin Booker saved my ass, 63 fantasy points. Drew Holiday saved my ass, 47 fantasy points. Um, Aaron Gordon and Dwight Howard were big misses that I need to account for. So I mentioned at the end of my live stream I'm going to do a very, very meticulous tracking of my stats and my performance. So I'm, I started off with a $400 bankroll. I'm going to play 15% of my bankroll each night, 20% split to head-to-heads, 50-50s, double-ups and triple-ups, uh, three three-man to 20-man tourneys, and then GPPs. And I'm going to track this every day and show my average score and sort of the ROI that I have at each one of these levels so we can be you know, super transparent about it and, and really try to build to fill holes and figure out where I'm missing and why. Uh, like last night, for example, down uh, $6.60 in the head-to-heads, but up nine sixty in the 50-50s. It's just weird. Like I got the wrong, you know, in theory... The 50-50 should be more of a, a, a normal spread. And what that would say is that I got lucky, or I got unlucky in the head-to-head selections that I had. But it's fine. Um, so this is going to slowly build up. Uh, this false is like a 14-man tournament. I didn't uh, didn't account for that in my name catcher. I need to scoop it up a little bit bigger and put it inside like the 20-man combo, I guess. But I'm going to build this up. I'm going to try to play, you know, probably six days a week. Probably need a day off every now and again. But this is going to build up into a big time, like, bankroll tracking exercise. Something that I know people ask about a lot and never really see it in practice. So I'm going to be as open of a book as I can and show all of this stuff every single morning in a recap video. So that's all I've got right now. Um, That is the recap for yesterday's slate. 
If you liked this video, please like it on YouTube. It's super helpful in uh, letting this channel grow. Same for subscriptions. If you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle's at the top of the screen. Um, I have a Patreon set up, so if this product that I'm sort of putting out is interesting to you, uh, you know, we'd love to have you as part of the group. And by we, I mean me and my one other patron. <laughs> so I do appreciate it all. Um, I'll have all my other stuff up on the Reddit DFS uh, board. I'm always putting my stuff there. If you ever have any questions for me, you can ask them there or Twitter or email, whatever is best for you. Um, I will have the breakdown video shortly. And um, that's it. I'll talk to you later.